Hello, I'm Mad Baby Buns, and let's talk about great people. It takes many people to create empire, but it could take just one person to change it. <clears throat> this is the concept behind great people in Civ 6. About every great person is unique in what they offer, and each civilization will be competing to get them. There are nine categories for great people, and there are several great people within each of those categories that are tied to their own specific era. Let's use great generals for example. Every era will have a bracket, and the game will choose one great person from each bracket to be presented in your playthrough. The important thing to know here is that the era that represents a great person is not the era that represents a player's own era. Meaning despite the era that you're in, you can get any great person displayed in your game as long as you have the currencies to recruit them. There are two primary ways to get a great person, and that's with great person points or patronage. Each great person needs a certain amount of great person points before you can recruit them, or if you have the necessary gold or faith, you can outright purchase them. Government types, policies, districts, and some wonders help generate great people points, however the most consistent way to gain them is with districts and great person policies, especially early game. A specialty district will generate great person points towards the same great person type. For instance, let's say we wanted to get mm, this guy. All players will have to generate 120 great scientist points to recruit him. By having a campus district, we can start progressing with one great scientist point per turn. Every district building we construct will also increase the amount by one, also adding the inspiration policy for more points. Now, at 6 points per turn, it will take 20 turns to reach 120 points, and to try to ensure a lead over the other players, we can acquire a burst of points by constructing and completing projects. Once you build a district, in the construction tab you'll be able to create projects which will give you a boost towards the great person it's related to. So if we constructed and completed the campus research grants, in the early eras, we'll roughly get around 30 great scientist points towards our great scientist progress. And all projects are repeatable. They can also give you a burst of gold, science, culture, and faith depending on the district. Another thing to take into consideration is, as your progress towards your great person increases, your patronage will decrease. If you keep an eye on it, you might find a more affordable way to quickly recruit. Also worth mentioning that some wonders can give out a pretty good amount of points per turn towards a great person as well. Once a player recruits a great person, then a great person from the next era takes a spot. In turn, the amount of points and patronage needed increases, and continues to do so with every subsequent era. Players who are unable to get a great person will still retain any progress they had towards that great person type. However, if any player chooses to pass on a great person, they'll have to pay a small amount of points while also making it cheaper for other players to recruit. Alright, let's get into great people as a unit. All generals and admirals have a passive ability that grants 5 combat strength and 1 movement to any military or naval unit, respectively, that's within 2 tiles of them. These passes only affects units of the same era or one era greater. So a medieval great general or admiral's passive ability will only affect a medieval and renaissance military unit, while a renaissance great general or admiral's passive ability will only affect renaissance and industrial units. They also have a retire ability that grants you various bonuses or units when you retire them. Great scientists, engineers, and merchants all pretty much work the same in the sense that you have to be either standing in a specific tile or any tile to activate their abilities. Nothing special nor complicated, let's move on. Alright, great artists, writers, and musicians work a bit differently in that each one requires certain buildings or wonders to hold their great work. Your palace can hold one work of any type, while the buildings from a theater square district only have slots for a specific type. Because most of these type of great people often produce more than one great work at a time, you'll usually have to rely heavily on wonders for more space to hold their work. Profits. Alright, here we go. Once you get one of these limited edition f***ers, they'll start a religion when you activate them on a holy site or on Stonehenge. Now, if they were always that easy to get. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, all great people have their own era. So what you're seeing is at what era they start and end. 
Obviously this is just to give an idea how it works, so we're looking at this under the pretense we've started on an ancient or classical era game. Now because the great people on the top row start in classical era, you'll have 7 attempts to get one from each type. With the engineer you will have 6 attempts because it starts in the medieval era, and with the great artist you'll have 5 attempts and with the great musician you'll have 4. However, this is not such a big deal. I never really had a problem with missing out on a great person completely, except for that one that you can completely miss out on. The one that works slightly different, the one that's arguably the most important of the great people. Oh, you want a profit? Well, you first have to gain 25 faith to get a pantheon, then you have to start getting great profit points to lay down that holy sight sun on all your cities. Forget the starvation, forget the rebellion. You think Stonehenge will help you? You'll need to do some actual praying to get that done in time. If you think you're about to get the last profit, no. That unmet player is actually Saladin, and he's gonna take your profit and your girl. <laughs> 